thank you very much. Yeah, so also welcome from my side to the bite size talk. And after Harshal introduced us last week to modules and these are two in general, I want to um, try and give a brief overview about how you can now make use of the modules in a pipeline. Oh, sorry. Okay, so to get started, um, I um, just want to briefly recap what a module is. So it's an atomic process that cannot be reduced any further. And it usually contains like a single software tool like FastQC, for example, and it can be used within a pipeline and also shared between different pipelines. And to make use of the sharing, there's um, the end of core modules repository on GitHub, where you can find um, many of these modules already. So to make use of these, um, this modules repository, um, there's a new or um, it's already released, but there's an existing subcommand in the end of core tools. Um, just a brief recap, you can install it with Kip and Condor. And if you then run end of core modules, you get a list of subcommands that you can use to interact with this repository. And if you then uh, run um, one of the subcommands with minus minus help, you get some instructions on how to use them. So I just want to, um, over the next couple of slides, uh, briefly introduce you to some of the subcommands that could be helpful for using modules in the pipeline. Uh, so I think one of the first thing you may want to do is try to find a module that you could use. And you can use the N of core modules list for that. And it will just print out all the modules currently available. And they are subdivided in tool and subtool because many tools like SAM tools or BCF tools have these subcommands that are then their own module basically. Um, and then other tools like FastQC that don't have any subcommands, they are just a tool. Okay, so if you look through the list and you find a module that you like to install, you can run N of core modules install and then your pipeline directory and the tool name and that will um, install this entire module for you without you having to do anything else. Um, and it then looks like this. So on the left-hand side, there is a completely fresh new pipeline that I created with a template and then I ran N of core modules install. And then on the green, you can see where this module ends up. Um, so the modules then basically creates, um, there's a subfolder called N of core software and there you can find the FastQC module um, and with three files, the functions and F, the main and F and the meta.yaml. In the meta.yaml, you can find documentation like what type of input and output does this module take, who wrote it, what does it do, these sort of things. Um, in the main NF, that's where the extra magic happens, where FastQC is run. And then in the functions and F, there are some helper functions that are needed. All right, so uh, one of the, I guess the opposing step to that is how to remove a module that you don't want to use anymore or that you erroneously installed. And for that, you run N of core modules remove, and then that uh, removes this entire subfolder that had fastqc with this functions main and meta file in it, and it's gone. And then you can you have nothing. Uh, you don't have to do anything else there. All right. Then um, sometimes the module will get updated. Maybe the software was updated, and this was propagated already to the module, and you would like to use this newest update. So how to make sure, first of all, that you have um, the newest version and then how to update it. So to check this module, you can run the N of core modules lint um, on the directory to check all modules or in a um, specific module like FastQC and it will check um, among others um, whether or not you have any uh, missed any changes. And then to update it, you currently have to remove it and then reinstall it, but in the future, um, Kevin is already working on um, creating an update subcommand that you can then use. Okay, and then last but not least, what do you do if the software you're looking for is not in N of core modules? And you basically have two options. One is to add it to N of core modules and the other one is to create a local module. Um, so to add it to N of core modules, this is usually really helpful if some other people or some other pipelines will use the software as well. And if you're unsure about it, you can always check the issues. Maybe somebody has already started working on it um, or requested it. Um, or you can ask in the module select channel. Um, and Kevin will talk about how to actually add this um, at end of core modules um, in his talk in a couple of minutes. And the other option is to create a local module. So this is useful for software that is really specific to your pipeline. 
Um, and you can run N of core modules create, which will create a local module for you. If you look in this box, you can see the N of core modules folder that I um, we already saw and we've seen before, and the local subfolder in which um, your tools will then uh, live and on your, your process will live. And a lot of the things that Harshal and Kevin covered in, uh, we'll cover in both of their talks is uh, relevant here, even if um, Kevin's talk, for example, is more tailored towards N of core modules, but a lot of the functionality will be similar there. Okay, so this N of core modules create gives you this um, file here with many to do statements and little help messages. And then you can uh, start filling it out and um, try to make get your tool to run here and hopefully the to do statements help you figure out what exactly you will need to do in each and every step. All right, so now that we have modules either local or in of core modules we want to start uh, writing I mean actual workflows and pipelines. And they are two um, different types of sub workflows. So these are chains of multiple modules with some sort of higher level functionality, like all the QC that tools that will be run on fast queue files, and then extra workflows, which are end to end pipelines. And then DSL1, we've known them as like these large monolithic scripts. But in DSL2, this is a combination of modules and sub workflows. And this is really taking one input and then producing a final output. Um, on the right hand side, I um, visualized the file structure a little bit. This is the current file structure of the viral recon pipeline. And for modules, we have local and N of core ones. Um, I showed you those before. And then for sub workflows, it will be a similar structure. Just some sub workflows will be relevant to many pipelines, such as QC. And then we have the workflows. And in this case, um, I think Harsh are separated by the input types of data. Yes. So for Illumina and Nanopore data, there's different types of workflows, which will then be called from the main NF. And these workflows are consistent of sub workflows and modules. Okay, so to use a module, you have to install the module or create a local one. And then the next step is to adapt the conf modules.config. And this is really where the sharing of tools will, on software will um, makes it easy because here we can actually share the same software, but we can specify for our specific pipeline which command or which um, parameter should be set. So for mark duplicates here, it says exactly which um, parameter should be used. And there are a couple of different ones. I highlighted here the um, arcs one um, to give you an example. And then uh, some um, modules you will see have an arcs two um, line. And this is because, um, for example, for mapping immediately samples is run afterwards within the same module. So with the one with arcs, you can specify it for BWMM, for example, and then with arcs two for samples. Okay, then the next step, um, if this is only has to be done once, you have to include this modules.config in the next for config, and then at last include the module into a sub workflow or into a workflow. And this looks like this. In pink, you can see the include statement. You include this module BWMM from the path where it lives. So modules and of course software and so on. And then you add the, these options, these params.bwmm options that were previously specified in the config, in the modules.config. So this is how you can pass them down. And then in the sub workflow that we have here, we have three scopes. So take main and emit, and then take, it specifies the input data um, as channels. So here we have reads and indexes or indices for um, my little test workflow. In the main, this is where the modules come to work. So we have the BWMM module that was included up top and the SEM tool sort module that was included. Uh, we can run BWMM and then take it, even the BWMM output and directly run it into a SEM tool or put it into SEM tool sort. And last but not least, from these sub workflows, he can emit named outputs to then do other things and other sub workflows or modules. So here he can now name our output from SAM tools sort um, out BAM and name it, I don't know, sorted BAM. And then uh, up in the workflow, we can access this sorted BAM directly to do something with it. Okay, so last but not least, we have to combine the sub workflows to workflows um, or sub workflows or modules to workflows. 
So here we, um, in the header, we have the two include statements for the workflows or the sub workflows in the fast QC. So from uh, once from the modules and of course software and one from sub workflows local. And once again, we have to add the parameters to pass them down. And I highlighted it here again in yellow for you to be able to track this a little bit. And for the fast QC module, we just need to specify the parameter for fast QC. So modules and then um, in the brackets fast QC. And but for the sub workflow, you have to specify all options for all the tools in there that you would want to specify. So here we have BWMM and SAM tool sort. And this is exactly now this field that was originally specified in the modules.config. Okay, and then in um, the workflow um, and F here. I just run the module fast you see on my read input reads that I got and then um, the sub workflow on also the reads and the index. I get the sorted BAMS output um, and then I can do some more steps with that. Okay, so and then I want to show you how it looks like to add the workflows to the main NF and here I took the viral recon one. Um, that I mentioned earlier. So here you can see now that um, we have three different workflows that are actually possible and they are apparently dependent on the input data. And the whole main NF now becomes really lean. So there's a bit of header still here, but overall the entire main NF is less than 100 lines currently. And it makes it really easy to now track for your input data, which workflow is run. And then you only need to look at the SRA download workflow to really see what's happening. Okay, and then two more things I want to mention that are um, important. Um, so you always will have to adapt the multi QC module somehow to customize it for your tools. So you will have this is similar to the DSR one version, but you can collect all the metrics in the workflow um, script, and then pass it down to your multi QC module on the right hand side, you can see all the different input data. So this is one where you have uh, to create a local module for and you can then collect this data from the, I don't know, fast QC module, for example, here. And last but not least, you will have to collect all the software versions in your workflow. Um, so each module must emit its software version um, just because we need to track all the tool versions and you can collect them all by creating an empty channel and then mixing these versions in. And from the sub workflows, you can propagate them up by these named emit versions. So for a BWMM version, you can get the version from the module and then access it again in your workflow script um, as test sub workflow out BWMM version, then run your local module in the workflow. All right, and with that, I'm already in the end. Um, don't forget to join us for the next hackathon. And if you have questions, um, we will have a Q&A session in the end or ask them in bite size later on modules.